first event for winter 2015, uh, Professor Mehmet Samini, who teaches in the Theatre Arts Department at Tehran University. Uh, at least she taught there till uh, a few months ago, and whether she's still teaching there or not is a matter yet to be determined. Uh, uh, she is a playwright of a, a remarkable, uh, prolific uh, uh, work. Uh, many of her works have been performed at, not in, just inside Iran, but outside Iran as well. Several of her plays have won awards. She's an award-winning playwright. Uh, we have performed, we have uh, essentially done a stage reading of one of her plays last quarter. It was a remarkable play, and when I found out that she was in the country, we decided that we have to take the opportune moment and invite her to come and uh, talk. And she will be talking about the image of you know, women and Iranian women filmmakers. So please join me in welcoming Professor Thank you to Dr. Mirani to invite me. And, uh Actually, um, the idea I'm going to share with you, uh, as you can see, is feminine mind, feminine body. The female body in the movies by Iranian women film directors. Actually, this is a part of um, a bigger project, which is about the um, meaning of the body in the Iranian movies. I just, at this time, I just focus on the female body in uh, movies by uh, women film directors. Feminine mind, feminine body, the female body in the movies by women film directors. One, I am my body. Last week, a nude photo of an Iranian actress was published and created an intense cultural shock all over Iran. Last month, a critic published his opinion about the fat female body of an actress to imply her worthless work. Last year, a male doctor in a TV show used a modern breast to teach breastfeeding. He was loved everywhere in public spaces like Facebook and etc. just for pretending to be a woman. A few years ago, a private film of the sexual relation of an actress accidentally came to the public and became the most seen film in Iran history. All these stories can represent the public views of the female body in Iran. These stories can be read as social phenomenon in which female body is viewed as taboo. These stories can show us how female body became a challenging object in our culture. The body in general, and more specifically the female body, almost never evoke any serious discourse in Iran. There are very few books or articles in the intellectual space addressing the subject of women's body. This is primarily as a result of how it has always been taboo to speak about women's body, and also because of the influence of a Sufic spiritual literature and art which views the body of women as worthless. Allow me to broaden this idea to an international view and see how despite the importance of body and its representations, historically most other cultures, philosophers and writers, from Plato to Hegel, and others also chose to talk about soul and mind as a spiritual eternal being where body is an objective dying material and therefore ignored or overlooked by a spiritual discourse. It is true that the body is not eternal, but as Roslyn Dipros describes it, this body is not something I have, it is what I am and its motility is how I have a world. We need to accept that we cannot escape from our body. Our body is our existence. Our body is seemingly just an object, but actually this object has a strong link to our soul and mind. We, find, we feel pain and pleasure through our body. Maybe we can playfully change this Descartes phrase that I think therefore I am too. I have a human body, therefore I am. 
Now let's jump into cinema and follow our topic with this question. What happens to the body on the screen? Body becomes larger than life. Body becomes a platform in which stories are told. Stories define the body. This body is now magnified with its many layers. Cinema is the art of showing magnified bodies, where in philosophy, literature, and somewhat theater, we can get away from speaking directly and fully about the body and its representations. Body is the essence of narrative cinema. Both female and male bodies, beyond their biological definition, occupy different representations. Let me categorize the different ways of representations of female body in cinema and in art in general. First, biological body. Second, sexual body. For many psychologists from Freud to Lacan, the female body has been always defined as the body through which men can find a sharp picture of their own body and its desire and reach to jouissance, I mean pleasure in Lacanian term. As Irigari writes, women's difference is and was understood and constituted in relation to man's identity as lacking what man is said to have. When women's body physically is defined as the man's otherness, it becomes sexual body. But feminist psychologists have presented different definition for women's sexual bodies, as Helen Sexo believes the female liminal economy does not focus on particular objects to the same degree as men does, and certainly not on the objects that the dominant culture nominate as desirable. The third one, sacred body. As an example, the body of a mother is a sacred body, since we have this memory that it feed us and it was our first home. The body of martyr also can be sacred. The social political body. For example, in a capitalist discourse, the female body is a source of money. In a Middle Eastern conservative discourse, controlling the female body is one of the main ways to keep power. In both cases, the ways women are represented in society and media is a political stand, whether in agreement or opposition to the power in hand. And the last one, mystic body. A mostly genocistic discourse in which the female body is a spiritual symbol, sometimes the symbol of heaven, sometimes the symbol of earthly temptations. Now it is the time to ask this question, what happens to this magnified female body when it is represented by a female director? Cameron says that art practice by women has a dual task to create new language and to try to disrupt or subvert the old inherited one. When we apply this idea to cinema and its structure, we have to consider and accept that the representation of body is part of its language which should be revised and redefined to the point we can create a new language. Psychologically and theoretically, women have a different perspective on female body than men, so naturally we expect them to reflect and represent it differently too. Jumping to the main subject, I would like to turn your attention to the Iranian cinema and the way in which the female body has been represented through the lens of Iranian female directors. When it comes to Iran, the female body is a much more challenging phenomenon. Throughout the history to this day, the female body has been suppressed by male power. There is almost no official trace of poetry and art by women left before the Constitutional Revolution, but at this point, we have to escape through the history of oral literature and poetry and focus directly on cinema. The first question is, could women directors escape from the dominant discourse and its powers to represent the female body in their view? 
Secondly, how would they avoid the governmental boundaries and limitations? And most importantly, how would the female body and the female mind meet on the big screen? Two, I am the ugliest woman in the world, but I have the same feeling as the pretty ones have. This is tragic. Before the revolution, the most popular genre in Iranian cinema was film Farsi, where female body was almost only limited to showcasing breasts and hips shaking in front of the lens. At this time, Iran was moving toward modernism, where definition of beauty and female body was more sexualized than ever. During this time, in 1961, a radical and critical short film by Furuha Farrokhzad, a well-known female poet who has already been breaking taboos in her poetry, came off with the title of House is Black, Khanes Yahas. House is Black becomes the most significant film of its time and for times to come, for how it redefines aesthetic standards and introduces a different representation of body and the female beauty to the camera. But in part of the action, the action of 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 مایه ساختن این فیلم و امید سازندگان آن بوده است. The film begins with an image of a leper woman in the mirror. Here we are only able to see the woman's image through a mirror as she sees herself in mirror. We are both encouraged to accept the ill horrid face. Here Farrokhzad is directing us to look at the image of leper woman as if it was our own image in the mirror by which she disrupts and subverts the notion of beauty and what the popular culture has been presenting as aesthetic standards. In the following scenes, there are more and more images of lepers' bodies which normalize the ugliness to viewers in order to highlight that subjective feeling and thoughts are the same whether in beautiful or leprosy objects' bodies. There is seen referring to this idea in which a leper woman who is anointing her eyes with coal, her subjectivity is a woman, but her objectivity is a leper. This is tragic. Three, I am a woman, I don't have a body, I am just a soul. The Islamic revolution happened in 1979 and it felt as if suddenly our world turned upside down. Undoubtedly, women were in the center of this structural change for several reasons. First of all, women with their western styles and clothes were one of the remaining signifiers of the former regime. The new rulers was spreading this ideology that a woman is not a body, woman is a soul, damn body with a soul. And referring to this, they created their own most famous slogan in the 60s, which was, woman is a gem inside the shell. Zan Gohari Star Sadaf. They also refer to Islamic rules in which women are asked to cover their bodies and their hair from Namahams to keep their beauty just for mahrams. And in its extreme point, this can erase body of women from the text of society, but this worked in Iran differently. Hijab means covering, and was done by fabrics. These fabrics were known as chador. Chador would embody their concept of disappearing the female body. Here, the patriarchy was forced with a contradiction, was faced with a contradiction. On one hand, by referring to woman as soul, they hoped to eliminate their social presence, while at the same time, 
veiling will not give them any excuse to prevent women from being outside of the house. In Farsi, chador has a dual meaning. As mentioned before, it is used to describe the fabric which covers the body, hijab. But also, it means a tent or temporary housing. So one could say, by wearing chador, women were at home and out in the society at once, which made the patriarchy confused as how to control them. At this point, after the revolution, the female body had become a highly charged political landscape. Depending on ways women would dress, the tightness or looseness of their clothes, and the use of makeup, one could draw a link to, um, to their political religious views and their uh, class and possibly opposition to the government. In this table, you can see the films made by women directors through 60s, which means 1981 to 1991. In the city of Mice, 1985, Marzia Buruman's first feature puppet film, made specifically for children, Mice and Not Women, presented the oppressed. In her first feature film, Relationship, 1986, Purani Darakshande, features a deaf boy who is expelled from society. Darakshande believes that the boy's effort in the film reflects her own efforts in patriarchal society. After this film, Darakshande chose a girl or woman lead for her next three films. In such a manner, she continued her exploration on marginalization of women. <laughs> In her fourth film, Lost Time, 1989, the Rashande takes on a more challenging topic by representing a female writer that is infertile but is creative and so does give birth to her imagination. The Rashande declares that Lost Time, which directly dealt with women, the feminine body and the issue of birth banned her for working in cinema for decades. It's important to note that at this time, during the war, sacred pregnant body was the only or nearly only physical condition of a female body which was legitimized. Pregnant bodies carried soldiers. Therefore, they were sacred. Also, as I mentioned, the body of mother is a sacred body since we have this memory that it feed us and it was our first home. Fanny and Hamad used the same strategy. Her first film, Off Limits, 1986, is a comedy with two male characters, a thief and an employee. Fanny Hamad continues the same approach in making her other two films in the decade. I mean, films without no women leading women characters. Taking all the facts into account, one can come to say that female body was exiled from the cinema of women directors. Of course, there were some women characters, but it seemed as though they lacked body and remained as souls. Therefore, when they speak about female bodies representation from the point of female directors at this period of time, we are speaking about nothing. We are speaking about a void. The lack of body of woman in these films carries two different messages. First of all, it shows the way women directors found a way to avoid red lines. But from different angle, this can be a strategy in opposition to show the cliché force image of the female body. But in the next movies, by them, gradually women came to the stories. Four, I am a woman, I have a body, my body is my destiny, but I hate my body, I hate my destiny. Finishing war in 1988 gradually changed the dominant discourse of body. When men and women were losing their bodies, representing the body in any other way except sacred body, or at least mystic one, was shameful. 
critics, cities were under the heavy burden of martyrs' corpse. One decade after the war, it seemed as though bodies were ready to be born and speed along with several structural changes in society. Big cities like Tehran were rapidly changing and developing, and these new cities needed new bodies. At this period, film made by women filmmakers mirrored these changes perfectly. In these two tables, you can see the movies made by women directors in 1991 to 2001. Now new generation of women filmmakers and the older ones had a desire to speak about women in their works. Although representing the women personal experiences and sexuality was still a taboo, one could notice the tendency that these filmmakers had to cross boundaries as little as they could. We can categorize their choices in representation female body in two groups. First, the female body as a social political signifier to signify opposition of tradition and modernism, and second, female body as a social sign to show potential threat and danger. The first, female body under two forces of powers, modernism and tradition. Modernism in which women were encouraged to gain education and knowledge in order to obtain subjectivity in the male-centric society. Two women by Tahmineh Milani is a good example of this, this discussion. The plot of the story is based on the character of a talented, educated woman called Fereshte, who is married to a traditional man and loses all her social opportunities. She is beautiful, and her beauty is her biggest problem in a patriarchal society. Her body is her destiny. Her friend is not as beautiful as her she is. Therefore, she is much more successful in terms of finding a social position, for nobody wants to possess her as a pretty object. In a significant scene, we see the couple, Fereshte and her husband, seated on a bench in a public while some passing by men start to catcall her. For them, even her covered body under the chador is a sexual object. The husband is angry and starts to fight them because he feels that his possession has been orally abused. In a fellow-centric discourse, female body is potentially social disorder. In another scene, the wife is going about to give birth to her child, and as, as she wants to scream from the pain, her husband prevents her to do so, as this scream will sexualize her body outside of the house. But anyway, at the end of the scene, she screams loudly. In these movies, the female body signifies the existing schizophrenic of the society at the time and the battle of tradition and new developments. Therefore, the female body was caught in the middle of this confusion. In The May Lady, 1997, Barry Etamot shows how the main character, Furuk, who is divorced intellectual filmmaker, is stuck between two bodies separate body as a mother, and feminist sexual body as a middle-aged alone woman. Tradition, popular beliefs, and patriarchal discourse support the first body, while she herself as a modern woman wants to support the second one. Two, female body as a potential threat and danger. Despite the fact that speaking or representing the sexuality of bodies, the female body, I mean, was and is still a band from the society, but filmmakers found their own creative ways to go around these boundaries through small and metaphoric gestures. Based on a true story in Appel, 1997 by Samira Mahmoud we see yet again how the female body is horrifying truth to the patriarchal world. Here, an illiterate man has imprisoned his daughters along with his wife at home to keep them uncorrupt.
this obviously only concerns the female body which for him are possessions, sacred possessions that he feels responsible to protect against the wide world outside. The Daughter of Sun by Maryam Shahriyar, 1999, also can, another, can be another example which is about an Afghani girl who disguises her body under men clothes in order to find a job and work among men by protecting her body. Among all the movies with similar thing, I would like to focus on Nargis, 1991, a film by Rashad Ramiyat which takes on a different angle to represent the female body. Ramiyat Hamad reverses the common Oedipal situation by having two women fight over a man's love. Ada's current lover, Nargis, and his criminal compatriot, Afaq. Afaq, whose beauty is mostly a thing of the past against Nargis, a beautiful young girl from a very poor family. Two sexual bodies in comparison to one another. There are two significant scenes in which the director directly depicts their sexual desires. One is a scene with Adel and Nargis at their wedding night, where they both go to their private bedroom. Camera follows them and stays behind the closed doors, where we see their shoes on top of each other. The placement of shoes is a metaphor for their bodies and lovemaking. In another scene, <coughs> Afa rapidly puts red lipstick on her withering lips, knowing that Adel is waiting outside of the door, but Adel leaves her soon. Afa finds Adel knitted sweater and starts smelling it while crying, on, crying onto the sweater. The scene hints at the unfulfilled lovemaking. Adel's sweater is what is left of him for Afa, only a reminder of his absent body and therefore absent pleasure for Afa. This indicates a dead end for any feminine and physical desire, reminding us that the dominant patriarchal constitution has no place for a woman like Afa, aged and infertile, therefore not desirable nor sacred, which makes her more marginalized than ever she was. Her body becomes her burden and her inescapable destiny. This movie is a unique example among the others in which tries to find a link between the social role of the body and its sexuality. Five, I am a woman, I have a body, but I am not happy with this body. I want to be sexier or asexual. I want to have a change to masculine body. After three decades of silence, the excited sexual bodies gradually and widely are coming back to the public spaces. Having hijab is still low, but young women living in big cities uh, have completely redefined and changed its function, as hijab is for covering, but now they use it for revealing. In a better world, they consciously use the scarf and covers to highlight their sexual parts in agreement with the male gaze. And unconsciously, or maybe consciously, I don't know, this daily act became a social and highly political act against the ruling power. This is their words. I am a young woman. I am the only owner of my body. And I do whatever I want with my body, regardless of the controlling power and conservative traditions order. And I also do not care about how feminists and intellectuals may analyze or judge the way I present my body. This opposition represents itself through the following phenomena. Escalation of plastic surgery in the past 13 years like never before. Increasing production of underground pornographic short films illegally. The increasable presence of voluptuous untrained actresses in the mainstream. 
Now let's get back to the main subject. How do women directors represent this current area in their films and how do they chose to represent this wide wheel of young generation? From the beginnings of 80s, there has been a great progress in women's filmmaking in Iran, about 47 feature films have been made in the past 13 years, which can be categorized based on how dealing with the representation of female body. One, some movie by women directors directly went toward commercial and popular cinema, which remind us of film Farsi. I would like to refer to a film by Tahmine Milani entitled Superstar 2007, in which female characters are based on the same cliché as film Farsi used to work with, of course, without shaking a hips and breast in front of the legs. <laughs> Other women directors have tried to focus on the other side of the matter, taking agency and ownership over one's sexualized body, female body, I mean. One of the most significant examples of this is 20 Fingers 2004 by Mania Akbali. <laughs> In this film, women freely speak about their bodies and experiences. Another movie that can be mentioned in this category is Three Women by Manager Ekmat. ببین بچه با من شوخی نکن. چهار تا سوال دارم ازت میکنم مثل آدم به من جواب بده. آره دوستی هندوله کم میخوره. شیرینه. Another group of women filmmakers chose to speak about the epidemic problem of Iran, regardless of gender. Rashan Anyatamad is one of them with two films, Gilane 2004 and Mainline 2006. Gilane is a movie more about what happened to the bodies after the war rather than their gender. Both mother and son are asexual, and their deformed bodies are social signs for showing the result of the war. Main line is about another major epidemic in today's Iranian society, which is addiction. Sara, the addict, has no feminine behavior nor any desire for being sexual. She has a fiancé, but her main lover is opium. Again, this film tries to remain focused on the issue of addiction, regardless of gender, by removing all aspects of femininity from Sara, although the director show us how more vulnerable is Sara to obtain drug in comparison to her female friends because of her female to, make, to her male friends because of her female body. Number of other women filmmakers still are continuing the discourses of former decades. In some movies, still the body of women are represented sacred, such as 143 Rack, which comes directly from the 60s, or Friday Evening 2006 by Mona Zandi, that tells a story of a young, beautiful woman who is raped by her uncle and gets pregnant. از بابارا نه چیدی؟ دست تنها تونستم اینجاره گیر بیارم کلی و نر کردم از باب کشی که دیگه هیچ The movie wants to negate the idea of sacred body but at the same time carries the idea of fear for being a woman which comes from seven days Shh, girls don't scream سعیم کردم به گذشته فکر نکنم دبیرستان تو خونه تازنمون تموم کردم تا اینکه یه روز یه خواستگار از یه خانواده خوب برام اومد 2012 by Puran Darakshan they can also be included in this category the movie is about a bride who has been raped as a child 
The movie carries this idea that feminine body is the potential enemy of young, innocent girls. At the end of this part, I would like to focus on a movie that seemingly has three latest characteristics of mentioned ones, Facing Mirrors, 2009, by Negara Azerbaijani. She belongs, I mean Negara Azerbaijani belongs, to the young Iranian generation of filmmakers. آلمان که بودم خاله من بود پیش دکتر روانشناس. راستش اولش خجالت میکشتم بهش بگم مشکل میشه. تو میدونی ترنس چیه؟ ترنس به کسایی میگن که میخوان تغییر جنسیت بدن. من ترنسم. یادش چه کسا بدم از به من دست ازن؟ به من دست ازن؟ عاشق یه آدم دیگه بودن چجوریه؟ Alina encountered a religious woman in her age. At first, the woman pushes her away, but afterward, she tries to realize her condition and says, beyond all, she is a human being. She says, as her she was actually not Alina is neither a man nor a woman. There is no scene in the movie to show her sexual desires as man. Her Masculine desires are only about shaving her birth, her birth, and wearing a hat instead of scarf. In one aspect, one may hear this internal message in the film. This could be a better world if we could forget about our sexuality and just be a human. This voice echoes the atheist in another aspect. We witness this phobia against having a female body. Adine, the transsexual, hates her feminine parts, and she is right. And the voice of sisters comes through by another female character in the same movie called Rana. Rana is a religious mother who tries hard to effort life while her husband is in jail. تو میخوای توی محل زندگی کنی پس فردا خواهی جون برگرده باید جواب شه بیدی. She reminds us of the sixes place on sacred bodies, although there are few moments that she is consciously thinking about her body. The very first scene of the movie starts by Rana annoying cold in her eyes. آشقی باید قسمت آدم بشه. وقتی شد یهو به خودت میایی میبینی یکی از که برات با همه فرق Which I like to think is consciously referring to the scene we saw in House is Black four decades ago. I like to think that Azerbaijani is asking us to reconsider what was changed about the female body and their representation, if anything, with our cinema. Another interesting fact about coal is that in the popular belief, coal protects the fragile bodies from danger, while on the other hand, it has an aesthetic quality. Coal signifies the feminine beauty, while it reminds us of fragile nature and surrounding troubles. To me, this dichotomy is interesting in ways in which after so many years come back to the screen. Conclusion. In 60s, there is no trace of female body in, uh, I mean, no serious trace of women bodies in uh, the films by women directors, so I wrote that female body as nothing. In 70s, female body as two functions sign of uh, opposition of modernism and tradition, and the second one is sign of fear, threat, and danger. And in the 80s, till the I mean, and early 90s, 2001 to 2014, there are four meanings for uh, women or female bodies in film, in the movies by women directors. Rebirth of Kim Farsi, a sexual body, fear, threat, danger, and feminist sexual bodies. A few notes to add. In all decades after the revolution, representing a female body in cinema has been controlled and limited. Because of this, filmmakers have mostly used metaphors or words to speak about the female body indirectly instead of showing them. Two. Covering the female body even in private places like bedroom in Iranian movies 
automatically makes the female bodies as a social political signs, these images, or this image, is not real and has alienation effect in Brechtian term. And the creative way of dealing with this by directors can be analyzed. Three, what about the male body? What about the interaction between the male and female bodies in Iranian cinema? What about men's directors' point of view on this subject? Four, most of Iranian directors speak about the pain and fear of representing a female body. Nobody speaks about the joy and pleasure and happiness of living in a female body. In this, is this the result of social political situation of women, or does this come from an unproved classic psychological theory about the masochism notion in women? Whatever it may be, nobody speaks about what Helen Sixo called as female body, which is a cosmos where Eros never stopped traveling, the source of joy and happiness. Thank you.